Um, so after this introduction by, by Stefano, we will now start the first uh, interview, uh, which is really about uh, Cochrane at large. So I will interview uh, Stefano, uh, who's our director, and, and Tracy Howe, who is also a member uh, of our core team, uh, but will also introduce her other roles in, in Cochrane soon. So the theme of our uh, session is the Cochrane strategy for change and the future of Cochrane rehabilitation. The reason we put this on the agenda is that uh, also in Cochrane, some changes are, are going on. And so um, I would like, like to, to start by uh, first asking uh, to Tracy and to Stefano what are their roles in Cochrane and then ask them to tell a bit more. So first uh, question, I would like to start with uh, Tracy Howe. Tracy, please uh, introduce yourself and most more precisely also your role. Uh, or your roles, because you have many roles, uh, and we are for that also very, very happy that you are involved in Cochrane Rehabilitation, because that is extremely uh, interesting and, and useful to us to understand. So please explain what you are doing uh, in Cochrane. Thank you. Thank you, Carlotta. Um, and um, good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon to everybody here. Um, it's an honour to, to be here speaking today um, and joining this fantastic community. Um, as you've seen from Stefano's presentation, you're a very dynamic and productive community. So, uh, so congratulations to everybody on their fifth birthday. Um, my name's Tracy Howe. Um, I was originally started my career as a physiotherapist. I'm based in the UK, in Scotland. And currently, I am the co-chair of the governing board for Cochrane. Um, the governing board sets the direction uh, of travel for the strategy for Cochrane, uh, and so um, you know that's a that's a, a, an important role, and it's great that um, I can bring a sort of a rehabilitation perspective to to the uh, the work of the governing board. Uh, other roles I have in Cochrane, uh, obviously, I'm an author of Cochrane Reviews. Um, and that's how I first got involved in Cochrane. Uh, and then I've, um, I'm currently one of the co-directors of the Cochrane Campbell Global Aging Partnership. Um, and of course, involved in Cochrane Rehabilitation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, perhaps Stefano, you can also explain briefly what you're doing except for Cochrane Rehab within Cochrane. Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, quite recently, uh, I've been asked to join uh, the Cochrane. Uh, I was elected, in fact, by the fields uh, executive uh, uh, in the council. The council is the voice of the Cochrane community that uh, has to be given to the board to uh, to provide the information on how to move forward. And, uh, and I have been recently asked to become the co-chair of the uh, council. So uh, currently, I am representing the, the Cochrane community uh, into Cochrane. Okay, thank you. So I will now ask perhaps first to, to Tracy, in fact, what is happening in Cochrane currently? Uh, a lot is going on. Um, what is happening and also why is this happening? Please uh, explain to us. Okay, a small question to start with. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, um, in terms of uh, Cochrane, um, uh, there are a number of, of things that are happening really in response to the changing environment around us. Uh, obviously, um, we all are very aware of the COVID-19 pandemic and the impact that that has on uh, organisations and people's work and, the, and priorities. Um, so some of the, the things that's ha happening in Cochrane really are a consequence of the uh, pandemic in terms of the way that we are holding meetings. And this is a great example of that, uh, hosting virtual meetings, uh, how we communicate with people, how we engage with communities uh, and our funders and stakeholders. Uh, there are a number of other things that are happening in, in the environment. Uh, people will be uh, aware of the open science agenda, and uh, that includes open access, where um, governments are, and other agencies are committed to producing evidence freely accessible to everyone at source. Um, that 
presents some issues for Cochrane because the majority of Cochrane's income is produced from sales of the Cochrane Library. So one of the things that we're looking at at the moment is, um, is looking at our business model uh, in terms of the uh, future of Cochrane and the sustainability of Cochrane. And a, a further uh, area is really in terms of um, our evidence production, which is our core activity. Uh, and in fact, that is, is goal one of our strategy for change, which is producing trusted evidence. And the key thing for that really is to make sure that our information is relevant, it's produced in a timely matter, and it's accessible uh, to, to people that need it in a way that um, is meaningful to them and useful to them. So that's uh, goal one. Uh, goal two is around advocating for evidence, which is really around uh, promoting uh, evidence-informed healthcare. And our third goal of our strategy for change is informing health and care decisions to make sure that evidence is useful and accessible. Uh, I hope that's sufficient answers to the question. <laughs> yes, thank you, Tracy. Um, I don't know if Stefan wants to add something or if... Yeah, I, I could uh, say what is the, the, the perspective of, uh, of Cochrane uh, rehabilitation in all these changes, because in fact, uh, uh, what, uh, what is happening is mostly on the part of Cochrane that is uh, uh, supported through the economic income coming from the, the Cochrane Library, uh, while the voluntary community like Cochrane Rehabilitation is, is not uh, so much impacted. So the, uh, we are now living in a situation in which uh, uh, the economic funding is decreasing and we run the risk of uh, having uh, problems in the evidence uh, production while there are other groups that uh, work fine and don't have these kind of issues. But probably what uh, will also happen is that uh, the restructuring of, uh, of Cochrane will, uh, will drive to a different importance uh, of, uh, uh, of the work of the voluntaries like, uh, like we are. And probably also, okay, I have to say probably because it will take some time before we will see the final results. Uh, but uh, there will be a different management of all the knowledge translation activities and, and that will probably, we will be in the middle of these changes for sure. But for the moment, everything goes on as it was. Okay, my, my next question, but in fact, it's already partly answered, thank you. Uh, I think is what are the threats and the opportunities? So the threats are obviously, uh, firstly, the, the financial threats, which may, put in danger some some review groups and there may then be an opportunity for for other uh, groups or fields or or, or or communities I don't know if you want to add something to the aspect of what is really the threat for uh, Cochrane and for Cochrane rehab in, in particular and what maybe are our opportunities also as as Cochrane rehabilitation to to contribute to that change yeah, I think, um, you know, with every threat comes an opportunity. Um, it just depends how you how you look at it. Um, there are many things really that um, uh, that this current situation uh, bring to the table is it's an opportunity to reflect on what went before uh, and look at what works well, but also an opportunity to look at those things that, you know, many people know don't work so well. Um, and one of those is uh, the, the length of time it takes for review production, the complexity of the organization, um, you know, the inclusiveness of the organization uh, and many other things. And so, you know, it's really given us a, an opportunity to, to completely rethink um, and reflect on, on where we want to be as an organization. What are the things that we can carry forward um, and really, you know, what what contributions the community makes in so many different ways and, and valuing that. So, you know, it, there are some, some threats, but there are also an awful lot of opportunities. And it really is giving us a, 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 a point in time to really consider wisely 
the direction of travel for the for the coming years. And I'm sure Stefano will want to add about Cochrane Rehab in that. Exactly. Uh, in, in terms of Cochrane Rehab, uh, I think we uh, we have been uh, uh, very successful. As, as I told before, we really were uh, surfing on the wave of evidence and the need of evidence in the world of rehabilitation. And we developed a model, a model that is based on few people working, but uh, a lot of people helping in developing specific projects and specific uh, ideas. Uh, so uh, the, we have a model of uh, a worldwide, a global community uh, of people uh, working together toward uh, agreed aims, and that 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 works. So can uh, can be something useful uh, also for other groups. Uh, and in terms of uh, uh, other opportunities, I see. You know, I, I'm still a PRM physician. I cannot avoid looking at the half full glass. I don't see the half empty. <laughs> so more opportunities than threads. I'm sorry for that. But I see also the opportunity to uh, help in the transition from uh, the randomized control trials as the totem of uh, evidence production toward uh, uh, a, a, a model that I call the model of the different pyramids of evidence according to the different uh, possibilities, methodological possibilities in different fields. It's not always possible to produce randomized control trial. The classical example is uh, uh, rare diseases there you can only have one uh, number one uh, studies, uh, but that also is the only evidence you can gather in those situations. And then uh, also, uh, yeah, looking at different ways to produce evidence that could be more meaningful in in uh, in areas of medicine in which you combine physical and behavioral. Uh, treatments and you cannot disentangle the physical from the behavioral and that is always the big issue that we have uh, in methodology so i see these opportunities and in terms of threads at this moment i didn't i don't see that much for a field like us unless someone decides the fields are not useful but i don't see that happening okay um uh, thank you for this do you think that um, the fields, so Cochrane Rehab, but also the other fields could uh, more concretely in this process of change within Cochrane also contribute to the new strategy and perhaps stress uh, certain items or talk from our experience because we are really working on, on the knowledge translation and dissemination as some centers are also doing, but perhaps we, we could really have a role there in this, in this change pro uh, process or like also global aging has been reaching out to other organizations, working on policies, et cetera. Could the fields really become also stronger out of this and, and contribute to the new strategy and really to the change? Yeah, so, um, so you will know that um, there's been a huge consultation uh, exercise um, over the past few months, which has looked at the, the future of review production. Uh, and within that, really there are two aspects of that. One is the sort of review production in terms of an editorial piece and um, the sorts of reviews that are published. And the other really is, is around the sort of structure within the organization that would be required to enable that to happen. Uh, and so um, people have had a, lots of opportunities to uh, give their views as individuals, as parts of groups, communities, the fields, and then of course um, uh, uh, those um, uh, groups have been able to submit to the, their uh, executives and then the executives to the council and all of this information has been collected um, and there's a phenomenal amount of information that's currently available. So uh, there have been a lot of really uh, positive comments uh, and suggestions about how we can move forward as a community. And um, I must be mindful that our strategy for change is underpinned by uh, four of our key principles, which is collaboration, uh, 
and I think fields are a fantastic example of, of that at work. Uh, relevance about getting the right information at the right time in the right format and again fields contribute fantastically in that area integrity uh, independence and transparent which goes really without saying and the final one is about quality uh, and um, you know looking at rigor and trust and Stefano's just talked there about methodological uh, quality in terms of having an appropriate appropriate methodology for the types of reviews and evidence synthesis that would take place in Cochrane, but also making sure that you know we look at um, different sorts of uh, evidence, and and that's the thing that's really currently being uh, discussed and debated amongst the community. And hopefully, a paper will come to the uh, governing board in January for uh, a discussion around what that might look like in the future. Yeah, perhaps we can continue a little bit on, on this, on, on which kind of evidence could be gathered. So Stefan already mentioned uh, there is the, the totem of the RCTs, but there are also other types of, of evidence or research that can be in some situations stronger. And, and we have this new type of pyramid of evidence and different pyramids of evidence. Is that something that we could also take the opportunity in this change project to to stress it more even though we know that already in some method groups or in some other groups they are working on this but perhaps we can elaborate a bit more on the gathering of, of evidence specifically for rehabilitation mm -hmm. if we could do more there or then i'm sure we will talk about it also in, in workshops to see for the next years the priorities but perhaps we can elaborate a bit more on that tracy or even stefano of, of course i mean um Methodological development has been one of the key uh, strengths um, in Cochrane from its, you know, very first uh, um, uh, launch of Cochrane. I mean, it was around the, the methodological piece about developing new methodologies, innovating in methodological uh, areas. And, you know, that's a huge strength for Cochrane and it's well respected internationally for that. And so I see, you know, that as potentially a key area for rehabilitation to, to engage in is this sort of working with the methodology community um, uh, to really advance things in that area and be, you know, the world leading um, groups that, that are, are working in this area. Uh, Stefano, do you want to say more? Um, no, I wanted more to comment on what you said before, because uh, living internally in Cochrane, uh, the way in which Cochrane tried to develop uh, its new strategies, its new way of moving forward is really a, a great experience. And I, I've never experienced anything similar previously in other organizations. And I think there is something to learn there. Uh, apart from the incredible brains but also egos that you find in Cochrane, so strong people with strong ideas, strong discussions, but also uh, when something has to change, like now, uh, the, the method is uh, you ask, you tell people what is going to happen, you give a proposal, then you start doing workshops and doing data collection and surveys and uh, in the different branch of the organization discussions are going on all this part of the organization produce documents that are collected centrally and centrally then is elaborated a strategy coming out from a really really huge consultation probably this is the only way to nurture these egos you cannot just keep go to strong people and say, this is it, and you have to do this. And, and even in that way, sometimes people feel they are not contacted and ask and listen well enough, but uh, uh, really is, is impressive. And um, yeah, we are trying to do the same a little bit in Cochrane Rehab with our survey to collect information, with our meetings uh, uh, in the committees, then meetings uh, with the advisory and executive. But uh, uh, there is a great example for all our community there. In terms of methodology, I think I already said uh, enough before, but uh, to me, uh, I never told that to you, Tracy, in fact, and, or, or before, but I think we have lost a little bit our 
primacy in methods uh, that was the one we had before. Nowadays, everybody does systematic reviews. Ours are the gold standard, that's sure. Nobody else does uh, with such a strength like Cochrane that is recognized everywhere in the world, but uh, probably uh, we are sticking too much only to the systematic reviews and probably it's time to looking forward. And that is something that is going around in, into Cochrane. And there is this idea of possible new uh, scientific outputs uh, that could probably help. I don't know, Tracy, if you want to, to add something here. Oh, yeah, you're leading me down that path. Um, <laughs> so, so, yes, um, I mean, one of the, the things is the, that our um, our primary product is are the, the systematic reviews, of course, but we, we're conscious that there are other uh, potential products that um, we ought to be publishing. And so one of the things that we're considering now is how we might um, make that happen. So the governing board are, are in discussions with uh, a number of people and um, it's all around the sort of open access uh, discussions as well in terms of how if we do something it would have to be in an open access model. So we're looking very much about how, how we could we could make that happen um, so that we can publish uh, alternative types of methodology. The difficulty, of course, is that the Cochrane Library is primarily a database of systematic reviews. Um, so it's it's difficult to, to put different uh, types of, uh, of uh, outputs into the, the Cochrane Library because of the way it's formatted and, and everything about it. Um, so we would need to look at potentially a new product um, to, to actually enable us to take that forward. So there are discussions ongoing about that. Um, we hope that we'll be able to, to give the community more information about that. The governing board are very positive about looking for new methods um, uh, of um, or types of, of publications um, that really reflect what the community is doing. So, so yes, uh, and the other things that we we're looking at really is in terms of the um, uh, the languages in which we publish, the format in which the publications are produced. Um, we're potentially looking at new streamlined versions of systematic reviews. Um, but you'll have to watch this space and see what happens. But there, there hopefully will be a number of really interesting initiatives coming out in the next year or so. Yeah, just to give our uh, colleagues listening some example, uh, the mapping. Uh, you have been in your, with your field, uh, the global aging field, producing one of the first mapping uh, ever, I think, in, in the area of health, because they those were produced in other areas of evidence. And we have been quite not not the second but quite close there with our evidence map for for covid-19 and rehabilitation and but there are also the rapid living systematic review that is something that is not only rapid is also living and this is something that is also a, some kind of a new product and there are new things that have been born because of the pandemic that really don't have a place not only in the Cochrane library in general, in the literature, it's very difficult to give them a place. And uh, and th those are the product for, for Cochrane. It could be the product for Cochrane. So, OK, this is just a, a comment about your, what you're seeing. OK, I think we can uh, more or less close up now. We have two more minutes left. I don't know if you want to make some more comments. Anyway, we, we can take. Uh, after the three interviews, there will be a question and answer uh, session. So I invite everybody to put their questions in the in the question uh, section, uh, so we can uh, some perhaps already reply by through the question and answer section, and others will be discussed after. So um, I don't know if Tracy or Stephen, I want to say something. Otherwise, yeah, I, I would, can uh, just one, one, say one thing about knowledge translation, if I may. Yeah. Um, so in the restructure of the central executive team, um, the knowledge translation uh, department ha has now disappeared. And the reason for that is because it was always intended to be a short lived um, program of activity to actually uh, develop 
the community, the thinking around that, the methods around that. Uh, and the intention was always that that knowledge translation will, should then be embedded in everything that we do. And so um, that's, that was the plan, that's what's happening. Uh, and of course, um, Cochrane Rehabilitation has been very central in, in developing a lot of those products um, and, uh, and outputs. So, uh, so thank you to the community for, for doing that. And um, there are lots of things that I know that, that rehabilitation has shared with the broader Cochrane community in those areas.